Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to this tutorial uh, whereby we are going to look at uh, GeoNodes, uh, which is a web uh, a GIS uh, framework uh, that is used in publishing and sharing geospatial data, among other things. And uh, we will be, in this tutorial specifically, we'll be looking at how to install it in uh, Ubuntu. And the Ubuntu version that we'll be using is a uh, 20.04 uh, long term release or the, the with the code name uh, Focal Fossa. So uh, let's uh, begin. So we will begin by uh, opening our, our Ubuntu. Uh, so I'm assuming that at this point you have logged in into your Ubuntu, whether you are running on a desktop or a server version. Uh, so it's highly recommended, of course, to install in a server version. And uh, the, maybe we we'll look at uh, the GeoNode uh, requirements, uh, whereby you need to have uh, certain. Of course, you may you may need to have met certain requirements uh, so that you can be able to run it. Uh, and this includes the RAM, the processor, uh, and the, and other. Uh, the RAM and the processor. So we have these uh, requirements from the GeoNode documentation. You at least require 8 uh, GB of RAM, uh, 16 GB is more preferred, and at least 2.2 GHz processor with four cores, uh, quad core, and uh, we also have uh, 30 gigabytes of uh, disk available. And uh, of course, 64 bit uh, hardware, which is strongly recommended. So yeah, so that is what uh, we we have here. So if you have uh, already met those uh, recommendations, then you'll be okay or requirements rather. So we will begin by the GeoNode advanced installation, and uh, in these we are just going to of course follow the official documentation, and I'll also explain where need be. So we'll first add the these uh, repository uh, to the Ubuntu GIS. Uh, API and I will enter my password. And then I will also run this uh, sudo apt update. So for the, uh, if you look at the app repository, uh, this is a, a script, or uh, rather it is a, it adds a script uh, that uh, gives us uh, an external API rather to the Ubuntu GIS sources and this is added into our local machine. So the next step is installing the packages. So GeoNode uh, uh, runs on, uh, it has dependencies and these are what we are going to install. So I've just highlighted uh, what is in the documentation. So we are installing build requirements, uh, GDAL, a library for Python and uh, we keen on the version where uh, we're using version 3.3.2 in this documentation. And then you have GDAL binaries. Uh, we have like uh, a development library for GDAL as well. And then we have Python 3.8 uh, development version, uh, Ven for the virtual environment uh, management uh, package. And then we also have the virtual environment wrapper which enables us to have uh, isolated uh, Python environments. Then, of course, we have the XML library and the development library of the same. We also have the get text uh, and then libmem memcache, uh, which also helps. It helps in uh, designed to be light on the memory. And then we also have the Z library development package, uh, JPEG, PNG development package, and this is something called the PQ that uh, works with the Postgres uh, SQL at uh, the development package. And of course, we have the software properties common, build essential, which is very common for those who have been doing uh, building uh, both uh, uh, maybe uh, Ruby, C, and C++ uh, packages, uh, those who have been doing the making, uh, building them using the CMake and all that are familiar with that. And then we also have Git because you're going to be pulling the Git repository for GeoNode. And then we have the unzip library that helps us to unzip 
Uh, I think some at times the Linux system comes installed uh, with this. And then we have the C library, uh, which is uh, in Linux commonly known as the GCC. And then we have the, or rather the C compiler. Uh, so we have the Z library as well. We have the libgeos, which is a dependency. Uh, actually, it, uh, it is uh, used in conjunction with GDAL and the proj library for projection. And then we have SQLite. SQLite 3 is uh, uh, to install or to run proj, uh, it requires SQLite 3. So it's also a dependency. And then we have the spatial light binaries uh, and other the libsqlite development packages, among others. So let's uh, give it some few moments as it uh, installs all the, the libraries and the dependencies. Yeah, so it is almost complete uh, at 99%. So let's see, after it has completed, we are going to move on to the next uh, step, which will be installing the open JDK. Uh, JDK stands for Java Development Kit Library. So we will uh, just copy this. Uh, uh, in this journal, partic in particular, uses uh, Open JDK 8. I think at this time there is also an Open JDK version 11. Uh, however, we are going to be using this 8. Yeah, so it has completed. So I'm just going to clear. Uh, the terminal window and uh, contents, and then I'll just paste this. Uh, so we are going to install the OpenJDK, and it is installing. I think it will also come along with the OpenJDK 11, the Java runtime environment. So the Java runtime environment for the and the JDK are uh, normally used uh, by Tomcat. Uh, because GeoNode also has a Tomcat server that uh, runs uh, the GIS server that is common, uh, known as a Geo server. So this uh, requires the Java development kit, and that's where we are installing it. Otherwise, if we do not install it, then we may not be able to manage the GIS data or using the Geo, Geo server. Yeah. Yeah, so it is pulling the or downloading there the JDK library package. Yeah, so we are at uh, 95%, 96. Uh, it may also take some time, so, uh, especially on downloading, because I think it's quite uh, some size. Yeah, so it is unpacking. Uh, this means it is also installing, and you'll notice that we have some AMD64, these, uh, so means that the architecture it is a 64 bit of the machine. So let's allow it some time to extract. Yes, yeah, so somebody could be wondering how do we know which version of Ubuntu that we are using? Uh, so normally, uh, so we have installed Java. So let me just clear the screen and uh, you can check using there's a command called lsb uh, release and uh, we add a switch uh, or a hyphen and c and uh, it gives us a code name which is focal uh, but you can also use the unem command uh, of course it will show linux but uh, unem with a for all so it shows us the uh, kind of linux version you can also use the lsb release uh, dash A for all. So this one shows us the details. So this is Ubuntu 2004 long term release. So that's how you can check Linux. So we'll move on to our next command, uh, which is updating the alternatives. We want to point or uh, ensure that the default Java that is being used is Java 1.8.0 uh, because that's what Junod is using. And uh, normally I've been getting this. Uh, kind of error. So if you also get this kind of an error, there's another way for do a workaround for that, and that is using sudo update alternatives, uh, config, uh, two dashes and uh, config, then you type Java because you want to 
ensure that the default Java that we are using is uh, Java 8 and not Java 11. So as you can see, uh, it is uh, there's an asterisk on uh, number two here uh, that points to the Java 8 uh, OpenJDK. Uh, so don't worry about the priority and status. For now. But, uh, the only thing you need to ensure is that it is at number two. If it is not, maybe if it is pointing to Java 11, then you may need to type the, the number here that uh, that is uh, coinciding with the Java 8 uh, OpenJDK. So in this case, if it was uh, at 0 or 1, in my case, I would have just typed 2. So nothing changes because it's already configured to use the Java 8. So I'll just use a control C to cancel. Yeah, so we have ensured that our Java is OK. So we will, uh, our next command will be verifying the GDAL version that has been installed. And uh, GDAL stands for Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, and it is, serves the basis of, uh, you know, uh, manipulating geospatial or uh, spatial data in many ways. Uh, so it is very important and critical in this uh, uh, geonode. So this is the output that we have gotten, so we are okay to go. And then we have the Python uh, version that we need to confirm. So we are using Python 3.8.10. And then you can, we can also use the which command to check. So which Python 3.8, it gives us the location for Python. Uh, we can also confirm our the installed Java version. Yeah, so we have OpenJDK 64-bit uh, server. And of course, also the runtime environment. So I'm just going to clear. So we are going to install the Vim editor. So for those who are not familiar with using Vim, you can stick to Nano, or you can, if you're in a desktop environment like mine, you can use the gedit uh, text editor. So, but in this case, I'm going to just stick to Vim. So I'll just clear to install in the Vim. So I'm just going to clean up. We're going to do a clean up of packages. And you'll notice that in the documentation, there is a warning here that states uh, Geonode version 3 uh, is not compatible with uh, Python that is le less than 3.7. So that's why we are using the Python 3.8. Yeah, so we'll proceed with installing the Geonode. And uh, in this case, we will be uh, of course, uh, we now install the uh, install the virtual environment manager. So we are going to export this variable. Uh, so if, uh, for example, I now type uh, echo, work on, uh, work on home. Oh yeah, I need to add a variable indicator. So yeah, so this shows where the uh, the path or the variable uh, for work on home that is being going to be used by the virtual environment wrapper. So note that this states that you only need to do this once, first time only. So yeah, so we have uh, cre so it has created all these uh, sub commands if I may call them that for the virtual environment wrapper. So you can read on the Python documentation for details of that, how to use or how to manage virtual environments. Yeah, so it has created a virtual environment that is called a geonode. And how do I know that? Uh, because I can see, yeah, if you look at the terminal or the host name here, uh, it's different, the user and the host name it starts with a name that has some in brackets. So it's sure that we're in a virtual environment. And also one way to know that is I can now, if I do which Python, it's showing it directly me to the Python, the isolated Python environment that we have just created. And if I do queries, uh, Python should is going to give us our most information. So you can also check using the PIP, PIP Python package index. So you see it also points to the virtual environment, uh, the particular virtual environment. So we're just going to clear that. Then there's also an alternative. If you find these up, uh, these three commands up here are not working, you can use, you can do it manually by creating the directory, uh, uh, creating the virtual environment using the 
and and then using the source uh, to activate this is a manual way of doing it but i personally i prefer the first method so we are going to go into the uh, we are going to uh, though, so this is in case you have logged out so in this case let me just deactivate to return to the previous state and now if you are, uh, you have this and you want to activate the geonode that you we have just created you can just use the work on command and, uh, geonode uh, which is the name of the virtual environment so i'm just going to clear so so the other thing that we are going to do is we are going to add this uh, the variable into the uh, bash source file uh, because uh, this ensures that even if we reboot our computer we know the path to the virtual environment so i'm just going to start editing so this i'm using the vim editor so i'll just uh, type on i to activate insert mode and then i'm going to add copy and paste these commands uh, these two lines at the bottom of the file and maybe i can Add a comment here and say uh, virtual environments. Yeah, so let's escape and I will uh, end and exit. So if I'm not sure, I can just cut, use a cut command. Let's say. And if you see the bottom, this uh, it outputs everything that is in the file. But if you see the last lines are already there, so we are good to go. Now the next procedure will be uh, creating the Geonode core base folder in OPT, and of course the change the ownership to the current user that I'm using, and also the WW data. Um, so you can check on. Uh, Linux groups and all that. Uh, if you want to understand what is uh, WW data and all this user mode, so maybe what I can explain briefly is that the first command creates a directory in OPT uh, folder that comes with the uh, Linux, and uh, inside it will create, it has created a folder called Geonode. Uh, it has added the user, which is my current user, uh, to the group ww data so this command adds a user to a group and it starts with a group which is ww data and the user so if i for example i copy and paste this it will output the user uh, let me use the echo it will output the current user that i'm using so i'll just clear that then the other one the, the other command changes the ownership shown is a change ownership from the uh, change the ownership to myself or my the current user that I'm using and the WW data and also this one is uh, changing the mode uh, that includes read write and execution permission so you can just research on this if uh, you are interested in knowing the details so now we are going to go into the opt folder and also perform a git clone so you'll notice that we are pulling geonode from the git repository a branch for version 3.2.x and uh, we are going to clone this into the geonode folder that we have just created earlier so we are at 29 uh, percent it's almost complete as you can see the size it is uh, approximately 424 mb so it has completed so what it has done basically it has cloned uh, let me repeat so these are git clone commands so you can check the git documentation if you want to read more about that it is cloning uh, from the geonode uh, repository in github uh, the dash b is the branch because it has various several branches so we are using the branch for 3.2 and it is good it is cloning it into the geonode folder so if we check the geonode folder let's see what it contents it has so these are the contents that have been are pulled from uh, github so we will now proceed with installing the python packages uh, let me just clear the terminal so we will nav navigate into the folder using the cd command the directory and then we will now use pip to install uh, the contents that are in the requirement text 
uh, upgrade. Uh, and uh, one thing that I must insist is that ensure that you're in the Python environment, uh, which is GeoNode or whatever name that you have given it. So ensure that the it, you, are, you are in a active environment, actively you are in an active environment, so that it does not install these uh, particular items that are in this file globally. So I'll just click enter. Yeah, and it start installing these uh, various libraries. So we have Pillow, uh, XML, Psycho PG2 for connectivity uh, to the database, uh, Postgres database, Django. Uh, we have this uh, AMQP, uh, PYAML, Beautiful Soup, uh, Hyperlink IDNA, PyLib IMC, and all. Uh, yeah, the list continues. So there are quite a number of libraries, and these are in that. Uh, particular requirements file. So you'll notice that we have so many Django uh, packages, Django-based packages, uh, Django Testify, Django Forms, Django Markdown, because one, more, uh, one of the key uh, component of GeoNode is uh, it runs on Django. So uh, that is why, and then you'll also see some GIS libraries like PyProj, PyGDAL, Shapely. Yeah, so, and uh, yeah, the list uh, is quite, uh, it continues. And not, of course, one thing that we need to mention is that it also installs, uh, let's say if you're installing package A, maybe Django leaflet or something like that, you may find that it depends on a certain library. So it will also install the uh, dependencies as well so it is uh, building the collected packages and the list is here our final step in this uh, stage will be to install the uh, pygdal that is compatible with the gdal version you remember we ran this command uh, gdal config version go to add an end so 3.32 so that's what it's going to install so I'll just copy the, the whole command and then I'm gonna paste it so it's installing the PYG DAO And if you look inly, we have the path to the installation, whatever it's installing there, uh, the package. So we've been able to install the GeoNode uh, libraries, uh, the requirements rather, which includes Python, uh, the virtual environments and uh, the dependencies, uh, their dependencies as well. We've been able to create the GeoNode folder. So you are not, uh, you know, this is not a fixed kind of a uh, folder. It's not mandatory, but the, uh, this is a recommended installation location. So this brings us to the, the end of this part one. Uh, of installing GeoNode tutorial. I know it's quite a lot to take in, uh, but in the next uh, step, we'll see how to set up the database for the PostGIS database that uh, GeoNode is going to use. So see you in the next uh, tutorial. Uh, if you like my videos, uh, you can uh, appreciate by liking and sharing uh, my content. Uh, and you can also click on subscribe for more uh, content. Uh, so I'll see you in the next, uh, uh, the second uh, part two of these uh, installation of Geonode uh, in uh, Ubuntu.